Now that we've finished learning about the structure and chemistry of amino acids and large-scale proteins, it's time to actually look at what proteins do. Now, proteins are particularly interesting to study in terms of function because they have by far the greatest diversity of function out of all biomolecules found in organisms. Another way of putting this is that proteins do far more than any other type of biomolecule that exists inside of organisms, starting with the fact that many of the most important structures that make up an organism are actually composed mostly or entirely out of protein. Two easy examples that we can visualize are hair and fingernails, and also toenails as well, if you're into that sort of thing, which are actually made of the same type of protein, which is a complex structural protein called keratin. Now, for anybody that's accidentally swallowed hair or has chewed their nails, you might be a little bit worried to find out that the human digestive system cannot actually break down keratin because of how structurally resilient it is as a protein. Now, somewhat related to keratin is another structural protein predominantly found on the inside of your body called collagen. Now, collagen is the major component of all of the connective tissue that exists within the body. So if you think about structures like tendons, which anchor muscles and bones together, or ligaments, which anchor multiple bones together, these structures are made entirely of collagen, which means that the body would literally fall apart if it did not have collagen in order to hold it together. Finally, an easy example for all of the health conscious people in the audience is muscle. Now, muscle is actually made of two different proteins. There's the first one called actin, which makes up the structure of muscles. That's the red parts that you can see in this muscular diagram. And the counterpart protein is a protein called myosin, which is actually called a motor protein because it is used to cause the contraction and relaxation of muscles that allows them to control movement. The second major category of function for proteins is their use in transportation of substances throughout the body. And we were actually introduced to a very important transport protein in the previous video when we looked at quaternary structure, and that is arguably the most important protein in the human body called hemoglobin, which is found inside of your red blood cells. So hemoglobin actually contains an iron atom right at the center of its four different polypeptides that make up its quaternary structure. And this is why your red blood cells are predominantly red. And of course, hemoglobin is essential because it is used in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide by your circulatory system. However, the overwhelming majority of transport proteins are actually found on the surface of individual cells in the cell membrane, and the function of transport proteins on cell membranes is to allow certain substances that cannot pass through the membrane directly to be transported either in or out of the cells. So in this diagram, we can see this transport protein is used to import glucose inside of the cell, but arguably the most important cell membrane transport protein is this protein here called aquaporin, because not surprisingly from the name, this is the protein that allows water to pass in and out of cells. Now, in the lipids video, we talked about what hormones, also known as chemical messengers, are. And in that video, we described hormones as being chemicals that are made by one part of the body, passed around through your bloodstream, and end up in a different destination, in a different part of their body, to communicate a set of instructions for that cell to undergo change. So one of the most well-known examples of a protein-based hormone is the hormone that is produced by the pancreas in the digestive system, a protein called insulin, which tells cells in the human body to take glucose from the bloodstream and transport it into your cells. And obviously, if your body doesn't produce insulin, this is a very big 
big problem for your ability to produce energy. And in fact, the disease linked to a problem with insulin is diabetes. So as we can see, although proteins are not the only hormones in the body, they definitely fulfill an essential role. Now, speaking of essential, arguably the most essential role of proteins in every organism, not just in humans, is the function of enzymes. Now, for those unfamiliar with the word, enzymes function as biological catalysts, meaning that their job is to accelerate or speed up chemical reactions in the body. And the most important aspect of enzymes is that they are reusable, meaning that they are not consumed by a reaction the way that a reactant is. Now, enzymes are very, very critical in the human body because if you think about ways to speed up chemical reactions, the easiest way to do it is to increase the temperature, but obviously we can't do this forever because then we would literally boil ourselves alive. So enzymes are essential in order for ensuring that chemical reactions happen in a timely fashion, and if certain enzymes in critical parts of the body, like the brain, fail, that can have catastrophic results for our ability to survive. In the next video, we're going to focus on a concept called protein denaturation, which is what happens when a protein loses its functional structure and unfolds like this. Now, if a protein loses its structure, obviously it is not able to function properly. And at that point, we said that we will say that the protein is denatured. And in the next video, we're going to look at the different methods of causing protein denaturation and why it is very important to avoid these because as we've talked about losing the functions of many of the proteins in the body can have catastrophic or even lethal results.